All right, so I've been working with Vince for a um, number of months now with this uh, current model that we're going to be showing you. Um, and a lot of the work that I've done with Vince um, has not a lot to do with uh, 3DCS overall. Like we're going to get into the 3DCS side of things. But one of the points I really want to hammer home is how much work you are doing for a 3DCS model before you open 3DCS or outside of 3DCS, whether it's through collaboration with other teams, um, asking you know the right questions to those other teams, and then also you know documenting the assumptions that you're making while you're doing a 3DCS model, so that when you are doing these presentations to other teams, you can you know point out the spots where they uh, you know maybe didn't provide you with all the information you needed, but you were still able to get you know some results from that you, that you can still help move the design forward with. Um, so we're going to start off with um, the new model that Vince received. Um, we're going to, we first determined his outputs, you know, his measurements, and then we talked about setting up the model. Um, from there, we talked about the GD&T that's going to put in the model. Um, kind of all three of those kind of wind up into this understanding the assembly process, fifth bullet point that I have put down here. Um, and then at this point is where, you know, you'd really be building the model in 3DCS. So um, from that point, we move into checking the model once you're done building the model and then understanding your outputs and making decisions based on those outputs potentially. Um, so Ben, maybe the next slide, do we have another? No, I don't think we have another slide. I think this is the agenda slide and we're going to go ahead and get into Let's show the model. our model. Yes. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm going to allow Vince to introduce himself here and just cover, you know, introduce this nice model we, we're now looking at to us. So Vince, go so, ahead and nominal build and just deviate the model to give people a little taste of what they're going to see today. All right. So I'm Vince. Uh, I work for a company called Cordron New Energy Vehicle Company. Um, we're a Chinese-based uh, electric vehicle company. Um, this is uh, <clears throat> what we call the A11. It's a uh, steel uh, vehicle that uh, would be uh, lower end um, in the market. So <clears throat> let me uh, build, Spence, I can't see, there it is, okay. So I'm gonna uh, build the model and then um, I'm gonna separate it and show the building process. So what, what steps we take uh, in the assembly of this model, so. Yeah, so with this nice little animation that Vince is showing us here, you can just see all the moves and all the work that Vince has put into the model. Now, we're not really getting any information about how Vince created all this stuff yet, but that's sure. just to give you an idea of all the information that's in the model to this point, right, Vince? Right, and um, Spencer mentioned um, some of the materials that we need uh, before we start uh, going into the model. So I, I put a PowerPoint together. Um, is this PowerPoint showing? Yes. Okay. Yep. So um, generally I'll work with the product design guys because they've got a real good understanding of, of the build process. So uh, generally they'll give me some uh, ideas and they'll even put the, a PowerPoint together so that uh, I know how to assemble the model. So here we have a slide that shows the, uh, the underbody and we're using uh, the main sub-assembly. So the front, the mid and the rear. Uh, sub-assemblies and how those would be going um, onto the fixture. So we've got those three parts and then the next slide will show um, where we're putting the rockers on. Um, so so Vince, this PowerPoint, this is provided to you by other teams, you're asking other teams for this PowerPoint. Right. Um, what do you do if you don't have this PowerPoint? Because we, we, when we were looking at through your model, we didn't have information for every single thing that went together or every single bracket that was on the part. Yeah. So what's your... Uh... A, a lot of times if, if there's parts that we don't have uh, datum schemes for or, or an assembly process for, um, I'm going to have to come up with those on my own um, or work with people on my team to come up with those. Uh, we'll try to collaborate with product design and see if they agree with it. Um, or sometimes we'll just go on, go at it on our own. So. Um, there is instances where that happens, but for the most part, uh, our, our PD department is very cooperative with us. 
And Hugh, and you mentioned uh, a lot of, a lot of sometimes we'll do this, sometimes we'll do that. Do you have a team that you're working with, a team of dimensional engineers? You have a lot of people using the software. What's the, uh, what's your personal setup in sure. your job position? In the U.S., I'm the only one using 3DCS, but I do have a, another uh, individual that I work with that's, uh, he's more responsible for coming up with data, datum schemes, uh, coming up with the GD, GD&T, um, and he also works with the assembly process. Now, he's based in the U.S., where our technical center is. We also have about 15 people in China uh, on the dimensional team. So those guys will um, also, they, they work on different projects. For instance, we have three vehicles that we're currently working on uh, right now. So the A11, which we're featuring in this demo, we have the B31, and then we have the, the C31. So the C31 is our aluminum uh, vehicle, which is gonna be higher end. The B31 is gonna be our first vehicle that comes out, which is kind of mid-tier. And then this A11, which would be a lower tier uh, steel bodied vehicle. Um, so the the Chinese team does come up with uh, tolerance charts. They do come up with okay. uh, datum schemes. Uh, they do come up with a lot of uh, ECRs, uh, engineering change requests uh, regarding um, regarding the datum schemes or, or uh, the tolerancing or whether parts are going to fit together correctly. Um, so going back to my PowerPoint, um, this would be where our master locators are. So as I showed in this first slide, we've got the three sub-assemblies and this master locator uh, scheme is going to be how we bring those uh, sub-assemblies together um, for the underbody. I then go on to uh, the upper body process, and this was also provided to us from the uh, upper body um, product design manager. And uh, he's bringing the uh, body side outer on to the underbody, and then bringing the roof on and the the uh, rear uh, cross member. And then uh, going further into that process, then we're bringing in the shotguns and the upper cross members and the rear panel. Uh, we're then going to um, move to the closures. So as uh, Spencer said, sometimes um, we won't be provided with an assembly process. So in, in the closures case, I, I didn't have one, so I put one together myself uh, where we're bringing the rear door on, the front door, um, then bringing the hood, and then bringing the fender, uh, the rear trunk, and then the glass is going to follow that. Um, in this presentation, we, are, Spencer and I, are going to concentrate on the hood uh, and the fender, um, and we're going to we're going to do gap and flush. So, when my manager comes to me, or when somebody from the PD department managers come to me, they say, you know, "Look, I need you to do a tolerance a study, a variation analysis study, uh, and find out what our gap and flush is going to be for the fender to the door, or for the hood to the." fender or after after this project I'm going to be working on the battery box where I'm bringing the battery box to the underbody and um, and finding out what kind of uh, issues we're going to have with that but in this case um, I created a datum scheme for the fender where um, we have our primary uh, datum points which is a1 two and three uh, a1 is going to be on a bracket that's going to go to the uh, body side outer as well as a3 a2 is going to be brought to a fixture, a pad on the fixture, and then uh, a uh, B1 and B2, which is our secondary data points, are going to be brought to the shock, uh, to the shotgun. Uh, the tertiary data point C is going to be brought to a fixture as well. So A2 and, a and C are going to be fixture points. Um, and then. Um, of course, when we build our model, we need to add uh, tolerances to our model. So uh, the Chinese team, team came up with a chart that shows um, basically in our model, um, we've got all stamp parts. So um, it's, it's primarily uh, all stamp parts. And because uh, we're using stamp parts, we're going to go to the uh, stamp part uh, part of our uh, chart. 
and then we're going to use this mating surfaces which has a total tolerance of 1.4 millimeters uh, and that's for uh, profiles so profile surface 